Well, hey guys, get excited. In today's video, we're gonna talk all about why it is you have oily skin. And if you're feeling frustrated by your oily skin, stay tuned because I'm gonna be giving you some pointers in this video for your skincare routine that I think can help you out. Before getting into it, make sure you are subscribed if you like skincare content from a board certified dermatologist and hit that little bell icon. That's going to turn on your bell notification so that YouTube will let you know as soon as my videos go live. Oily skin, it is a common skin concern Concern. It is not a skin defect. Having oily skin is not a character flaw, so don't feel bad about it. You are beautiful with your oily skin. Why do you have oily skin in the first place? Like anything, you can always point your fingers at your family members because there is a likely a genetic component. Some people inherit larger oil glands or oil glands that are a bit too enthusiastic and tend to put out more oil. Without a doubt, genes play a role. Which ones? Probably genes that control proliferation of sebocytes, which are the oil oil gland cells. The other thing we can always point fingers at is hormones, specifically the androgen hormones, which are the male hormones. Whether it be localized overproduction of androgens in the skin, or maybe your oil glands, because again, your genetics just have more androgen receptors on them, or maybe the androgen receptors that you have are just a bit too sensitive to those androgen hormones. Uh, any number of those things could be going on as to why you have a tendency towards oilier skin. Kind of along with that, another thing that may be playing a role in your oiliness is your diet. Diets that are rich in processed sugary foods, convenience foods, packaged snacks, chips, french fries, pop tarts, you are subsisting on that. It likely can play a role in oily skin because you get elevations of something called insulin-like growth factor can impact oil production. It's a hormone and certain medications certainly can influence this as well. Hormonal changes in women throughout the menstrual cycle definitely can influence the relative oiliness of your face at different times. Positives of having oily skin, your skin may look a lot glowier, dewier. I mean, that's popular, right? The dewy skin look. The other benefit of having oily skin is it seems as though it may have a protective effect against wrinkle formation. Negatives of having oily skin are you may be bothered by the um, appearance of it. People will point it out. Why is your face shiny? The other downside of having oily skin from a cosmetic perspective in terms of either skincare products you're using or makeup is that oily skin types are more prone to products peeling, meaning they kind of peel up lift up off the skin. This can happen with sunscreen and it can happen with makeup. Layering on a lot of products doesn't always work out so well. A lot of people with oily skin, they have to use a lot of powders and things to kind of mattify things down. The other negative of having oily skin is that a lot of people who have a tendency towards oily skin, they may also suffer from acne because excess oil production plays a key role in the formation of acne. With acne, you get a little micro plug of skin cells, sticky skin cells down in the pore and then if you have a lot of oil production below that, that oil gets broken down by the bacteria, cutibacterium acne leads to a lot of inflammation, you get acne. But not everybody with oily skin necessarily deals with acne. So those are some of the downsides, issues, day-to-day -day struggles with have, having oily skin. What can you do in your skincare routine to minimize some of these issues? First of all, is more frequent cleansing. You guys know I'm always encouraging you to reduce the frequency of cleansing. But for people with oily skin, they are a skin type that often and benefits from washing their face twice a day, morning and evening. Now at nighttime, you wash your face of cosmetic residue, dirt, some of that sebum. You go to bed and unless you're sleeping out in a barn with your face down and a bunch of dirty hay, your skin should not get soiled as you're sleeping, but it can put out more sebum, more oil. When you wake up the following morning, your face may look shiny. If you're breakout prone, that oil on the surface of the skin can contribute to breakouts. It can get in the way with your makeup going on well. Washing your face in the morning certainly can degrease the surface of the skin. And I recommend considering using a salicylic acid cleanser in the morning for this purpose. Salicylic acid loves the oily surfaces. It helps kind of exfoliate the pore too and just overall can smooth out the skin surface. When it comes to oily skin and the nighttime cleanse, y'all know I'm a huge fan of double cleansing. Using an oil cleanser or a cleansing balm, both are, both are oil-based products, as a first step to break up the film of cosmetic residue, sunscreen. And then the second step 
is to follow it up with a gentle cleanser. I always get questions. I have oily skin. Should I really be using an oil cleanser? There's no evidence that using an oil cleanser is going to make your skin oilier, and it doesn't make a lot of sense. Oil production, again, is governed by things like hormones and genetics. Just having some oil on the surface of your skin, your, sebici your sebicides are not gonna proliferate. They're not gonna differentiate in response to that. But where people with oily skin can get into, run into issues with oil cleansers is if they use a large volume, like too much, and they don't wash it off sufficiently, that oil cleanser residue left on the skin, it can be irritating and that can contribute to breakouts. Check out my video on how much skincare product you need. I go over exactly how much oil cleanser to use in that video. Alternatively, a lot of people with oily skin find they prefer a micellar cleansing water to remove the cosmetic residue as a first step in a double cleanse. Again, I recommend following it up with a gentle cleanser to remove that broken up film of cosmetic residue plus the micellar cleansing water residue because micellar waters, they do have preservatives, which when left on the skin, admixed with that broken up cosmetic gunk can be pretty irritating. All right, so the next part of your skincare routine comes along and that is moisturizing. And here's the thing, people with oily skin, there's a disconnect. They think that because they have oily skin, they don't need to moisturize. But having excess sebum on the surface of your skin does not necessarily mean that your skin barrier is not prone to water loss whatsoever. I mean, the sebum, yes, it can help a bit with dryness, but it is not like a great moisturizer. You can, you can definitely have a skin barrier issue going on losing water, making you prone to irritation, and still have super oily skin. A lot of people in this category describe themselves as having combination skin, but it can happen to, to really anyone. Because the skin barrier and the, the sebum production, they're not necessarily synonymous. Having a, Using a moisturizer is still an important part of an oily skin routine. The question is which one? There are thousands and thousands of facial moisturizers out there, but I will say, while I'm a huge advocate of petrolatum for reducing water loss in moisturizers, for people who have oily skin that tends to feel miserable on their skin, makes them feel greasy, it makes them look greasy, makes them look shiny, it, it's just not something that get, they get along well with. And if they're acne prone, some very heavy moisturizers, they may trigger acne flares as well. So I suggest for people who have very oily skin, make sure you use a moisturizer on your face that is described as a facial moisturizer. Vast majority of those that are described as facial moisturizer will not have petrolatum so you don't have that issue of it feeling greasy um, and they will typically have things like dimethicone which is great for oily skin it allows for good evaporation of, of sweat uh, silicones in moisturizers they typically are good for oily skin types they mix well with the oils so they don't make you feel greasy. If you've watched any of my videos, especially the Shop With Me videos, whenever I'm over by the body lotions and creams, I will often point to them and be like, consider using your body lotion on your face as a facial moisturizer. It works for some people, but not always for others. And for those it works out for, convenient. You've got a product that you can use on your face and your body and you don't have to use a separate product. But if you have oily skin, chances are you're gonna be the type of person who is not going to enjoy putting a body moisturizer on your face. Why? There are typically thicker formulations than face products. They have a thicker density and they're often with petrolatum, which again, is gonna feel greasy and heavy on your face. There's a good chance that's not gonna work out for you. And moving along in the skincare routine, you've got um, your sunscreen. Everyone needs to wear sunscreen, but when you've got oily skin, this can really be a pain point in your routine because so many sunscreens automatically look shiny on the skin, and if you have oily skin, they often can look even shinier. The other issue is that if you've got oily skin, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, products are more likely to pill, and that certainly can happen with sunscreens. Rather than using a moisturizer in the morning, just use your sunscreen as your moisturizer. Don't try and layer sunscreen on over moisturizer. Sure, people with dry skin often can get, get away with that, but if you have really oily skin, this often is just not gonna work out for you, and truthfully, most sunscreens, they are going to help as moisturizers as well. So rely on your sunscreen for that piece of things. Don't complicate with multiple other products. So skip moisturizer in the morning and just put the sunscreen on. It reduces the risk of the sunscreen pilling over, over moisturizer, which you're gonna be more prone to that happening to you if you have oily skin. Choose sunscreens that have low molecular weight alcohol in them. This is an ingredient that still gets demonized. I still see this comment all the time. Why are you recommending sunscreens or products that have alcohol in them? It's fine, it can be drying, 
but it allows for a more fast absorbing formulation that doesn't feel greasy, that is less likely to look shiny on the skin. It allows for good evaporation of sweat so you don't feel overheated also. Um, one of my favorites is the La Roche-Posay Melton Sunscreen Milk. That is a fantastic option. Another thing to choose for your sunscreen is a gel formula. These are less um, readily available here in the States. Facial moisturizers that are a gel, they're not as easy to come by here. But the Japanese gel sunscreens, they are really good and they're really good for oily skin, especially if you have facial hair. Gel sunscreens, not only are they less likely to be shiny, but they don't really leave that residue in the beard as much. One that comes to mind is the Skin Aqua. Uh, that one tends to go over well in, in oilier skin types. So I'll link that down below. Of course, sunscreen is essential for everyone's skincare routine. It protects against sun damage that prematurely ages the skin and can lead to skin cancers later on in life. But another advantage of using sunscreen is that one thing with the oil on the surface of the skin, it can oxidize and that can end up being inflammatory. And that's gonna happen with UV exposure. So sunscreen is an important piece of that, especially if you are oily acne prone. When it comes to either your sunscreen or your moisturizer, I'm gonna plug niacinamide for those of you with oily skin, if you tolerate it. Niacinamide is in a lot of stuff, so don't go out of your way to track down a dedicated niacinamide series I mean, you certainly can if it, you know you like to use products, but um, it's readily available in moisturizers that would be suitable. It's readily available in sunscreens. Um, niacinamide, there is some evidence that it might actually help with uh, oiliness and, and acne breakouts. Another ingredient that may be beneficial, that's sodium ascorbyl phosphate. It's a stable form of vitamin C that a small study suggests may be helpful, at least for ac oily acne prone skin. So if you're someone who wants to incorporate an antioxidant serum, you, you may look for that ingredient. Another ingredient that can be beneficial for the oily skin people is going to be EGCG. That is a polyphenol from green tea. So you could either look for that or you could look specifically for green tea extract. And then last but not least, a big plug for incorporating a clay mask. Clay, namely uh, kaolin, zeolite, bentonite. These clays, they help absorb some excess oil from the surface of the skin and from within the pore. A lot of clay masks out there are very cost effective, easy things to do. You can either do them at nighttime or you can do them in the morning as part of your degreasing routine just to get some of that oil off the skin surface to help your cosmetics go on better. Cetaphil makes a great clay mask. Moisturizing, it's not really drying or anything. Isentree makes a mugwort mask. Phenomenal. I did a video a while ago on my top clay masks and I believe I, I'm almost certain both of those were in, in that video. All right, y'all, that's what I wanted to tell you guys about oily skin, tips, tricks, why you have it. Don't be bummed out about it. It's got its pluses. I mean, that's life, you know? Uh, you look fine, you look great. Uh, don't beat yourself up over it. And remember, when you go on social media, people are using filters, people are editing their photos, people are doing a lot of makeup and stuff to not look shiny. So don't think that that is reality. Um, most people have shine on their face. Even people with the driest skin type have shine. Light reflects off of your face, there's gonna be shine there. It is a normal part of skin. Can you imagine if all of our other organs had the same visibility as our skin does, we would constantly be bombarded nonstop with unsolicited feedback. I hope this video was helpful to you guys. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.